Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my roommate Melina and today we are talking about breast implants and how important they are in anyone's transition. I know that I made a YouTube video like three years ago before I got my breast done. I made a post-operative video. I made, um, I made it very known that I was proud that I got my breast done because that's kind of like an accomplishment and your transition is like one step closer to feminizing your your body a lot of people don't know when you're transgender like obviously you're born with a male body so it's like the female spirit in you is kind of like all right now i have to deal with what i have and genetics is not necessarily helping me but we're going to give it our best shot so when you go in to do your breast surgery the doctor has to be really good at cutting you up <laughs> pretty much because the doctor has to actually carve out a the pocket. pocket. Yeah. And if he does it wrong, then your breasts don't look natural or they don't look as well placed as you would you would hope. And for me, I think I went to one of the best doctors around that does trans uh, breast augmentation. You I know? would be scared if I take my breasts off, honestly. Like, Why? Because it's like part of woman you know and they came out really pretty you know educational purpose <laughs> um so yeah i would be, i mean i understand why you're doing it because it's because of your job <laughs> like you see it's like do profile like it's too like i understand i like i wouldn't if i was her i would have never done They're it, I wouldn't have checked it out, but they are humongous for her for my frame it's just like Good job. I can see your ribs. Wow. Yeah. But my breasts always get in the way. Like when I'm trying on couture, it's like, oh, yay, my arms fit in. My shoulders fit in. Yeah. And then it's like the boobs. It's just like. When it comes to the breast, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It starts to discourage me a little bit because it's like one more thing for someone, a client or a, a corporation to say, oh, well, those boobs. You know, if it's not a transgender thing, it's all they the have done job. it. Your agency done it. Your what? agency have mentioned that it will be beneficial if you take your breasts off. No, absolutely. That's that's yeah. what I mean. It's like I, I want to take. I want to be able to remove as many things off the list of things that I have against me. Like okay, exactly. the list of like why Carmen can't, why we can't book Carmen. Okay, if, if first of all, number one is that I'm openly transgender, and I will put it out there like that because that's actually. If I, if I would have kept my mouth shut, I would have done like a Gina Rosero. Like, worked, nobody would have known, mm -hmm. and it would have been non problem It would have been another girl. Yeah, it would have just been fine. I would have just been another another model, whatever. But being that I've I chosen to be openly trans, it's kind of like a, a bittersweet kind of thing to do because... Yeah, it's like you're proud of what you did, and obviously you love the people, and you love you love your fans and all that so you want to give that information that yes it's okay to be trans but at the same time i also like a but, you double know, standard yeah like i also want to empower my community you know i i can't say i belong to the trans community because i'm trans but i didn't grow up around transgender people i made friendships in the trans community in the gay community that have you know still lasted to this day me and melina have been friends for the past 10 years plus i don't know 10 15 years oh, that i've been friends with this person and as much as I know what's happening in the trans community, as much as people want to write on my Facebook and tell me how bad of an example I am, whatever, I can only be myself. And I do, there's a part of me that wants to empower the trans community by being a visible example of how a trans person can take what they have, be successful, maintain their family, still be human because, hey, listen, like, I go through my shit, I go through my emotions, I go through so much stuff in my head trying to please so many people because i want to empower my community because i want to be a good example but at the same time like i have to break down barriers those barriers are still real just because a million people on facebook will say i support transgenders that doesn't mean that victoria's secret will support transgenders mm -hmm. that you know h m will support trans people as far as putting them on the front line of their campaign. I'm surprised with the whole Victoria's Secret um, exposure that it was worldwide. Why they never reach out 
even to their agent, to your agency, or say making a statement, at least something like that. To me, that put them bad as a company to the trans LGBT community. Well, not only that, to the world, because yeah. the trans movement is happening worldwide. I just don't understand that industry. It's like when a picture is like, for example, if you walk Victoria's Secret or any runway, why there's a need to say that there is a transgender model? Why? Why is that label? You don't. You, you are a woman. Well, you I know, look like but a woman. it's it's so but it's it's, like, it's deeper than that because models represent people. Models represent women. That's why they have ethnicities. That's why they have you know different I want a blonde I want a brunette I want an Asian girl I want a you know Hispanic girl I want a white girl whatever it is they're basically their models are representing people and if people don't accept me as a woman then it's going to be difficult for them to allow me to represent the right. women yeah. no yeah, like I women you know what I mean and that kind of sucks because I am a woman the fact that I'm transgender doesn't take that away it's like it's only people's perception that they that they want to say like oh well you'll never go through what a woman goes through you you'll never menstruate you'll never give birth as which if that's, to me that's actually even better like, no yeah, like, don't but to no, me no, no, i get offended kidding, because though. it's like that's yeah. one of the biggest insecurities i have i wish i could menstruate i wish i could have kids but the fact that i can't shouldn't give yeah, you ammo to mm -hmm. dismiss my human existence knowing that makes me feel like i need to keep going and i'm, I'm not gonna stop because I feel like I can do it. You can do it, absolutely. Yeah, I think I can do it. So this is one of the steps, and that is getting my my breast implants taken out. And what is? Let's let them know what it's. Are you replacing them? Like, what's gonna happen after? Like, okay, so you're gonna take the implants. And I what okay. Well, I was on hormones for like a good two years before I got my implants, and I had a lot of breast tissue development. And after, a lot. yeah, I had a lot. I had like a good B cup, I would say, a good B cup on my own. And they were cute, like old boobies, you know, like they were nice, like the teenage boobies. Yeah, like teenage, teenage girl boobs. They were cute. And I got my breast implants done, but my transition wasn't completed. You know, you have to. I would say for me, I don't want to like start saying like you have to go through this amount of HRT. For me, I needed a good five years. Of HRT or I needed my SRS which is your, your sex change operation I chose a different route you know in my mind what made sense to me was let me get the hormones out of the way let me get any any feminization that I can possibly get in my mid-20s because I know that you stop growing after like 18 or something so let me see what I can do on a chemical level before I alter my body and you know, I sort of may develop regrets. My voice, my body, like everything has changed. My face, everything's changed. And it's because I decided to go with what was comfortable for me. So I'm pretty sure that I developed more breast tissue after my breast surgery because my breasts have dropped. Um, you and continue they on bound. Hormones. Yeah, and like I, I kept going on my hormones. so. Like, you need to know something about her, like, about Carmen. She is the term. Like, yeah. she has been dieting right. She has been eating right. She has been doing exercise. She has been taking her body, taking her mind. 7 a.m. tomorrow, I'm in for surgery, and I'm kind of... I don't even know that it's real. Like, for me, it's not even real. It's like... It hasn't hit us. It hasn't hit me yet, and I think it's going to hit me when I'm, like, in the bed, um about to like go under that's when i feel like it's gonna hit me like wow this is real because when i got my breast done i know that i was like freaking out and i was like almost like on the verge of tears because i'm like oh my god like you're yes. asking so many questions i remember you were asking the doctor like are you sure is it okay that to the nurse like you were like <laughs> yeah because like you're altering your body like i love my body as much as i might resent nature a little bit for like bringing me into this existence as male I still love my body. I love my toes. I love my hands. I love myself. So for someone else to like, for me to relinquish control to someone else to have to cut inside of me and place things in me, you know, and then I just have to deal with it after is 
drives me nuts you know like laying there before surgery it's like i'm passing my life over to you so i hope that you like take care of me like i would take care of me you know but another thing about breasts it's like i mean on my thing it was like to me breasts are like the most beautiful thing of a woman i should say to me so when she came with this not idea like this um we were talking and she decided to have her breast on like i panicked i was like wait what are you doing so but then realizing the woman that she is and all that mm -hmm. like i came to understanding that also for trans people or, or even a woman like you know you, we could have been god forbid having breast cancer and not have breasts true so it's like i i came to understand that Again, the look and having breasts doesn't make you a woman. It's just yeah. it's in the inside. So. Well, yeah, I kind of feel like, but you know what, too, for like for me, like I'm so long and lanky. Like I feel like I'm more of like an ass girl, like an ass and leg girl, than like a boob girl. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't feel like my boobs really do anything for me in a sense of like complementing my natural body. Like my body's long, so it would make sense for me to yeah, have like so. long legs and like nice breasts not like like boobs like these you know what i mean like but i i love them though and i think and i'm and i'm so happy that i've shared times with them you know like on stage it's like great right, what you're doing yes yeah. you know it's it's for first of all it's for your job second is what you wanted to do because you have been talking about this for the longest yeah well i kind of feel like too i'm gonna get judgment from the trans community like oh like why are you taking your breasts out that's so reductive to your transition and so like you know going backwards like i'm kind of afraid of that too and yeah, I, want, I thought about that actually yeah like, and i want girls that. to know that like your breasts your ass and your lips don't define you as a woman yes it's nice to enhance and of course i'm not judging you if you decide to do that but once you really come down to it and like in my experience i've lived around so many women for the past i would say three four years like i i forced myself into female society and what i've learned is that it's not really it's not like a necessity like i thought it was you know like i used to think i have to get my breasts done i have to get my face done to look like a girl or i'm gonna like not be accepted you know and that it, that's not necessarily true because Biological females don't have the most perfect hips, perfect ass, perfect tits, perfect mouth, perfect cheeks, like perfect hair. They really don't, you know, and usually the girls that try that hard are usually the most insecure ones. They're usually the ones that have things to hide and people judge them more than they do your average Jane. You know, your girl next door will be judged less than the girl that's trying to be perfect, you know, but there's nothing wrong with perfecting your body because I'm a fan of, of plastic surgery. Like when, when people have type of plastic surgery that looks really, really good, it's gonna get you excited because it gives you power. Like, oh, I can do what I wanna do to benefit my ego. Cause that's the truth here. You know, like mm -hmm. when you do stuff like that, it's just to give you a little boost, you know? And it's also to be happy on what you see. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I'm doing this more for me than for just my career you know i do feel like my breast implants are like the center of attention sometimes when i want to wear certain outfits and i kind of feel like now that i'm thinner i feel like they look more breast implanty they do like here but hi here are my boobs like when i stand up like this shoulders back it's like those are boobs boob implants like they're not there you go that just seems like they're like too huge yeah so uh, hasta mañana i will probably be telling you guys how she's doing i don't know i would call the camera yeah i'm gonna give melina the camera so she can kind of document for you guys to see you guys can see like the process and all that yeah 7.30 a.m. Bye. Bye, guys.